captain of our 49th precinct. Um, please welcome Captain Alice. Oh, I, I just need to take my If you don't mind. No, no, go right ahead. Well, I want to say thank you for inviting me. Um, excited to be here. Uh, I see great things. Uh, I've been in the command now since November 16th. Uh, I guess it's about 100 days. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you what, I see, uh, I see great things. I see great officers. I see a great community that's diverse and, and very involved. I've been to a lot of, uh, I've had my community meetings in the last Tuesday of every month, and, I, and I've been to a lot of community association meetings as well. And I just see a lot of people that are involved and interested in their communities, and, and they want to make it better. And I can speak on behalf of the officers that I've met at 49th Prison. They want to serve you, and they want to serve you well. Um, we ended 2016 on a, a great pay, um, uh, with a re reducing crime. And I'm seeing that trend again in 2017. Um, now, when I when I came in, and so I'm looking at ending year numbers, and I'm looking at 2016, and I noticed from a crime fighting stance, I'm noticing the majority of my crime, and I'm, we're talking about almost 60 percent of my crime is going to be uh, west of Williamsburg. So it's going to be in sector Henry and Eddie, which concerns you. This is your area, Henry and Eddie. And it's going to be in David and Adam down in Van Ness. Um, so I'm seeing a large majority of my crime is going to be West and Williams Patrol. Therefore, I deploy to fight crime. So the majority of my deployment is going to be West and Williams Patrol, which is going to benefit you. Um, I see my, uh, uh, my plan working. Uh, I'm seeing crime down. All my uh, crime in the precinct overall is down a little over uh, 9%, uh, like 9.6%. The only crimes that are up in the command are felony assault, which is uh, mostly DV related. And I got killed in burglaries down in Sector Adams, Van Ness. I had a guy named Vince Rosario, uh, who was wanted. Uh, he's a Brooklyn transplant, a king. Figures. He's down in. Uh, uh, <laughs> Like I said, the Van Ness area, a New Newport area. And basically, what he did was he went down I can't see him uh, from almost a 24 hour period and entered four residents. And he gave me four birds, or gave us four birds in one day, and then we liked him for about another two. So he did a lot of damage. I actually was on patrol one night, and uh, I actually encountered him up in uh, White Plains Road right up here now. I actually stopped him. Uh, person. This is before uh, he had did damage down in uh, Van Ness. So now he's wanted. Uh, we think he's probably in the 5 2 reason. But uh, he did the damage on Van Ness. Up here in, in uh, Sector Henry and Eddie are our particular concerns of mine. Um, last year in 2016, Sector, sector uh, Henry. I accounted for 28% of, of all my overall crime. So a lot of the crime is up here in sector Henry, which is basically um, a D to Mace, Williamsbridge, the Bronx Park East. And then Eddie, let me just make sure I'm giving you the right thing. Ed, Ed, Eddie's Mace to Pelham Parkway, Williamsbridge to the Bronx Park East. So Eddie last year, uh, accounted for 11% of my crime in 2016. And this year it's on the same pace, about 11%. Henry, um, it's about 19% of my crime. So I've seen a, a great reduction in Henry, and I'm steady in sector Eddie. Um, Eddie's, Eddie is uh, Mace for Pound Parkway. Okay, so I'll give you the, give you the breakdowns. Um, in sector Henry this year, 2017, um, which I said was uh, a D to Mace, Williamsbridge Road, the Bronx Park East. We've had eight robberies, 12 felony assaults, one burglary, eight grand larcenies, and two GLIs, two grand larceny arms. Um, again, that's 19% of all my crime in the precinct. It's 31 crimes total, seven majors. 
Eight of the 31 were domestic violence related. So now we're talking about 23 crimes that I would deploy to try to prevent. DV is mostly domestic violence, it's mostly inside family members. We're, we're going to make arrests on those types of crimes. We do home visits to the, to the victims to try to prevent further violence. But I'm not deploying to stop those crimes. I'm deploying to stop the robberies, which is of a uh, big concern for me after Second Henry. Uh, the burglaries, uh, you know, these felony assaults on the street, like the slashings and whatnot. Um, in the beginning of the year, we were taking some robberies. Um, it was like the second or third week of the year. We started taking a lot of robberies up in Second Henry. And uh, we made two big arrests. One was a guy by the name of uh, Remy Solar. Uh, he, I know Ralph had asked specifically about several of robberies up in Second Henry. And Remy Solar had uh, targeted some elderly people, one of which Ralph Bill. It was a uh, 25 41 Olenville Avenue. It was a daytime uh, gunpoint. Um, he wasn't physically harmed, but his wallet was stolen. <laughs> but he, he, was, he is an employee in that neighborhood. So, but luckily, the guy was arrested. Yeah, we, we arrested him. He was arrested on a pattern last year in 2016. He was released after a certain time. He comes out and he hits us again. And uh, he, we liked him for, for three robberies. So he's in the offer on the table for him is 16 and a half years. So he ain't getting out. So that's a, hmm. that's a big win for us. And then another individual hit us for three robberies up in uh, Sector Henry. A guy by the name of Nathan Sonny. Uh, he hit a, a 65 year old that does 2753 Cougar. Then he hits a, a 14 year old girl at 2751 Matthews. And then he hits uh, uh, another male at uh, Brighton and, and White Plains Road. And then on January 12th, we grabbed him for that body. Um, we closed out the pattern. The other two victims couldn't identify him, but he was identified on this, this one pattern. He's probably got about 20 arrests prior. Uh, so he's in. Um, since his arrest, I just, we have not had a robbery up in Sector Henry since. Uh, <laughs> February 3rd, three week stretch. Uh, we're really making strides on robberies in this, uh, in this command, and specifically in Sector Henry and Eddie. Now, if, okay. if we talk about Eddie, which is, uh, oh, I'm sorry, thank you, which is Mace to Pelham Parkway, Williamsbridge Road to Bronx Park East. When I look at Eddie, my, one of my biggest concerns is uh, the school, letting out of the schools, Columbus High School. Um, that's when I'm going to take a robbery um, during school dismissal hours. So I have deployment in that area, um, and uh, I have plain clothes officers in that area that are really uh, making strides, and uh, we've really reduced uh, the robberies in, in Eddie as well. Um, Eddie, right now, in 2017, we have three robberies. For, um, that's 10% of all of my robberies in the command. So uh, the command is doing well. Um, we have some issues, but uh, I think the plan is working. I've introduced a, uh, uh, a dedicated housing team to help serve the, the housing residents up in, in, in Parkside. The Coops, I know it's not housing, but I'm linking them into, because it's very similar in structure. Um, and Palm Houses, I have and East Chester, which really doesn't concern your area, but I have dedicated officers that are steady, that are in those housing developments. And they're gonna act similar to like an NCO officer. You've heard of NCO officers, uh, neighborhood coordinating officers. And they interact directly with the residents of the, of the housing developments and uh, they provide their cell phone numbers and email addresses. And they get to know the residents on a personal level. And the residents in turn give us information and tell us specifically on the conditions they want to see addressed, instead of us driving around and figuring out what we want to see addressed, what the residents want to see addressed. And, and it uh, brings the community and the police officers together. So I have a dedicated officers in housing, which is uh, a benefit for this area. Um, Palom and East Chester Coops are here, so you're getting uh, dedicated officers, but they'll be on the, on the premises. Um, like I said, my deployment is mostly it's all uh, west of uh, Williamsburg. So you're getting a lot of police presence. Um, 
I know car braking was an issue here. Um, we've made some great strides. That guy Remington Shoulder that I told you about that's been off on the table for 16 and a half years, he was one of the car brake guys. He lives in this area. Uh, he's got them. Um, I've seen car brakes decrease tremendously in this area. Um, and we've made some good quality arrests in this area for car brakes. That being said, we do have a pattern at uh, 2750 Boston Road by a Park. So um, the way we're seeing it is a white van, uh, multiple perps, our case in the parking lot. You'll see someone going to the parking lot, uh, going to the store. One of the perps will follow them in the store. The other perp will hit the car, and then they'll communicate back and forth. Oh, they're still in the they're still in the store. You got time. You got time. You got time. And then they jump out and they go in a white van. We got a perp ID. And we're hunting him. So um, that's a, a, a four nine four seven pattern and four five. Uh, they were hitting these right away parking lots for some reason. They like them. Um, so, but we are making strides in far as car brakes. I know that was probably. It seems like every I, I read every single complaint report that comes in. It's a lot of complaint reports, but. Uh, it, keeps me sharp, I get a good sense of, uh, instead of just reading the seven majors, I get a good sense of what's really affecting the community, and I can tell car brakes are a major problem in this command, um, and it's all over, it's not just this area. Um, but we've made some great strides, and uh, we made some great arrests, but I'll tell you right now, I think maybe out of all the arrests we made here today, one was made by us, the others were all made by you. Uh, it's going to take a, 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 someone in the community to alert us. Hey, listen, there's a guy in the car right now. You need to get over here and just open the window. If you see something suspicious, you've got to call 911. It's, it's going to help you out in the long run. Eventually, they're gonna, it might not be your car, but they're going to get your car eventually. Um, so a strong community that, that, that looks out um, it will really help us. Um, I wish they could be on every block. It's not easy. We don't have the amount of officers to do that. But if you can help us out, uh, I really appreciate it. Um, so I know car brakes is an issue. I'll just um, I'll give you a little background on myself. Uh, I got 16 years on the job. Uh, I started off in a 5-2 precinct. Uh, I did patrol midnights and I did anti-crime like plain, uh, plain clothes. 2005, I get promoted. I go down to the 2-8 in Hall. I was a field intelligence officer, which is where I, I, I guess I got my... Uh, my background, that's my strong point, I guess you'd say, intelligence, lead policing, um, working informants, um, gathering intelligence on certain crimes. I did a couple long-term cases as far as gun trafficking and narcotics trafficking, so I was successful in that regard, so I have some, uh, some good experience in that. I then get promoted uh, to lieutenant. Uh, I go to the 4th Precinct, the south of here, uh, where I uh, mentored the, uh, the new impact officers, um, like Officer Mark, a new, new officer in, in command. Um, so I, I did that for about a year. It's probably my most rewarding time uh, on the job. New officers are excited. They want to they want to serve. They want to do well. Everything's new to them. Uh, they want to make you proud. They want to make a big arrest. Um, and uh, I remember those days. Still feel that way. I love coming in. And when you go home, sometimes you just want to run back. You're thinking about the job, and you're like, I can't wait for tomorrow. Um, so what happens is, after a year in the 4-3, I get called back to the Intelligence Division um, by Chief Galati, and I, I did four and a half years of counterterrorism investigations. Um, it was a great time, great experience. Um, I got to learn uh, a lot of uh, real threats that are out there that are that the city and, and the country are facing. Um, I've worked with some really talented people. Um, so, and, and it brushed up on my intel skills. Um, so, then I get promoted in 2014. I go down to the 4 1 in Punch Point. I was the XO down to the 4 1. Then I get moved over to the 4 0 Freezing, uh, Mount Rosemont Haven. Uh, very challenging place. Um, um, I feel for those officers. They're very busy down there. The radio is constantly going. They're dealing with a lot of a uh, lot of issues. The communities down there are suffering. Um, a lot of mental health issues, uh, poverty, um, drugs, violence. Uh, so it gave me a, 
great appreciation for those officers down there. And, uh, gave me great experience. I get blessed. I come up here to the Fort Line Precinct. Um, I say this all the time at my community meetings. Some, some of you probably heard this. I've never seen a community in my 16 years so supportive and so involved in their community than in, in this in the Fort Line Precinct. Um, I don't know who is looking out for me. There's somebody up the stairs or someone downtown that gave me the 4 9 precinct. Um, I see the cops. I have, I have great cops. Um, they're tremendous. Uh, they really want to do well. So everything's set for me. I, I, I feel good. I look at the crime. I, I look at the, uh, um, the the plan. I really feel good about 2017. Um, outside of that, uh, I'll open the floor up to the questions. Yeah. Um, is it there's a couple of people who are here for the first time. I want to make them feel welcome to our meeting. So, um, if you have a question you'd like to ask the captain? Um, my name is Joanne. My only well, the big problem that we have on my 601 is the parking situation with the uh, church. Which address? 601? Oh, 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 okay. So, they park all over. Oh, the church. Yeah, church. Community board. Yes, yeah, actually, Mm -hmm. um, they have a van. They have a parking lot, which fits okay. probably eight, yeah. eight, or, eight, eight or nine ten. cars. And they have vans. And two nights ago, they have their van on the street, and they have six parking spaces in their lot. Look, I know it's a, I don't drive, but everyone complains about parking in Sector Henry and Sector A. So it's like it's just. And they double park and triple park, mm -hmm. and it's recent place dangerous for um, ambulances you know, down the street when they have services. And they've been having services on a nightly basis. Okay, so what are the times you want to call them out? 6 to 10. 6 p.m.? 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Monday through Friday, Saturday, Sunday, seven days a week. Well, I'll be, um, I'll be frank. I plan on speaking to them. Um, they are your neighbor. Um, I don't want to go with the enforcement route, by the way. Um, but I mean, no, no, I don't. Uh, but I'd like to speak to them. I haven't spoken to them. Maybe. In front of the church, there are three spots for handicapped parking permits. Yep. They are purposely putting the vans in those spots, and I've got this out of, you know, directly to that they don't want anyone parking in front of the church. So it's like a vindictive thing. Yeah. It's it's a little vindictive. The church. The church mm -hmm. handyman has been parking the okay. vans on the street, and then when it's alternate side of the street parking, he takes up the two vans, which take three spots easily. And moves them early in the morning so people can't alter the side of the street park either. And they have, well, they were supposed to have busing, not vans. They have parking for their vans. They were given by the community board 11. They mm -hmm. were told where they could park the buses. So it's not happening. Everything they said they were going to do is not happening. All right. I'll address it on speaker. Okay. Excuse me, Captain. They okay, are on um, the Council. When, um, Sorry. Uh, one question at a time, and when you ask a question, we do have seating back there, so we want everyone to be able to hear. So just wait for your turn, and I'll give you the microphone. All right, so, Kay, you ready? Yeah. All right, Kay, Mark, Grace, and whoever wants to ask a question, raise your hand, and I'll come to you. I don't really need the mic, but yeah, they are on the clergy council. They have been to clergy meetings, as you know. Um, the next clergy meeting, I think, is in March. Rabbi Thompson, is that? You would know. They are on the clergy council. They're very easy to talk to. I think if you just talk to them, they'll be willing to work yes. with us. Uh, Mark? I don't need the mic. Okay. Um, <laughs> no, everyone has a mic, please. Hello. Regarding um, uh, grand, grand larceny auto, uh, do you know which cars uh, are being targeted the most? Yeah, so um, I'll tell you. The one thing the 49 has definitely gone from, we got the least amount of GLAs in the ball. So I think we're at seven for a year. Uh, I like to attribute it to, uh, um, okay, so we've been receiving a lot of community complaints in regards to tow trucks. 
tow trucks that are aggressively towing or, like they say, uh, predatory tows. People that they're towing people uh, for, you know, without being called, they're coming to the accident scene, taking uh, cars and then holding those cars um, and, and making you pay a, a sum of money that's over the agreed upon amount. Because uh, the Department of Consumer Affairs monitors them and sets rules and regulations in place how much they're allowed to charge you know, when mm -hmm. they hook you up, how far they can tow you, when they bring you to the lot, how much are they allowed to charge you each day. And we were getting a lot of complaints about um, these tow trucks not abiding by those rules and those, and those laws. Uh, we started finding that these tow trucks were uh, unlicensed. Uh, that they were showing up to our accident scenes without us calling them. Uh, these are all offenses. So we started an operation where we started uh, uh, monitoring these tow trucks, and it's been successful. Uh, we've had a lot of enforcement towards the tow trucks. Um, I got no problems with anyone uh, uh, making a living. You're going to have to do it all. You're going to have to do it by the rules. And when you're hooking up an elderly lady that's, um, that's handicapped and she's in the TGI Friday parking lot and you're hooking her up because her tires are on the blue line in the handicapped parking lot and you're going to make her pay money for that. I take issue with that. So we are continuing our pressure on these tow trucks to make sure that they stay in, in, in line uh, and follow the rules. I think that is helping us also with some of our GLAs because our belief is a lot of these GLAs are tow truck driven. They get hooked up and gone. They're not. They're not breakings. I'm sorry, but which type of vehicle? It's going to be Toyotas and Hondas. Toyotas, Hondas, and motorcycles are the three tops, and it's in, in all of the Bronx. Um, so it's the same here. I saw it in, uh, and, and believe it or not. The other outside one are these Ford Econoline vans, but when they steal those, they're looking to, to take them from scrap metal because there's a lot of metal on the vans. So that's when I see them gone, and I know it's a steal, and it's uh, um, and it's it's probably scrapped. When I see a Honda or a Toyota that's using uh, parts, and I'm pretty confident it's a, it's a stolen car. Uh, when I see a complaint of a, no offense if you have it. A Kia or something, an abnormal like car, like a uh, I don't know, like my car, uh, like a Ford Escape or something like that. They're not going after those type of cars, so I tend to question those type of complaints. And I'm saying to myself, that's probably either repoed or it was towed because it was parked illegally. But uh, we do not have a GLA problem in this command. We did. We have two GLAs in in uh, Sector Henry this year, and zero in Sector Eddie. Um, I like to contribute to the operations we're doing, and uh, uh, and we're down fifty percent from last year in, in uh, GLA, so not an issue. I um, just want to um, see if this would be um, appropriate. A lot of times when I go out at night, if I see um, the, you can tell when it's a glass bottle of beer broken on the floor, and when it's a car window shot on the floor. The car window is usually like little small squares, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. probably half a centimeter wide. Um, if it's okay, if I urge, if you see the um, windows shattered on the floor on a particular block, the car windows, if you could send me a text and give me the location, and I could pass it on to the precinct. Um, a lot of times, I see the window. I see the car there and the window broken. I immediately take pictures, license plate, send it over to Captain and Community Affairs. But if you could do that too, and don't don't wait to see the car with the broken window. If you see the window there, if you see multiple windows broken, like in a row, two, three, four in a row, please take pictures and send me the location. And when you saw it, is that okay? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, I, I'll tell you, I, I see a trend down in the car breaks. We have made some good arrests with these car breaks, guys, in the act. And it, and it all had to do with you guys in the community alerting us. Um, so, yeah, no, I, I welcome that. That's fine. And the areas, just so you know, if you drive a car, the areas that are prone to car break-ins that I know of are between on White Plains Road, between Waring and Mace, right by the Harbor Freight Salvation Army. It's dark, secluded, no one in their apartment building windows can see, um, as well as Holland Avenue, um, between Mace and Waring, right by 135, right by 2440 Boston Road. Those are where I've seen a lot of the glass shattered. So um, Grace, then Larry. Yeah, both. 
I, I'm sorry, yes, and along the park side of Ron's Park East. Please, if you see windows broken there, please text me because I'm not always able to. And if people don't say, yes, they may make the police report, but I also like knowing, so I can, you know, tell them again, you know. You know, watch out for this area. And we also have, well, um, sometimes we have people walking at night, some of our members, and they can keep an eye out, you know, call 911. All right, uh, Grace and Larry. Okay, a couple of things. Just to address the problem with the parking, have you, you guys need to call 311, get a complaint, and then call Chris at the community board. And tomorrow is the community board meeting, right? Right. Yes. Should be, right. So, again, if you can go to the community board meeting, bring it up to them again as well. So this way you double tap. Um, for you, sir, <laughs> um, on my blog, Barnes goes towards Allerton. It's a one way. And we have this problem with these uh, delivery guys on their little scooters always coming down the wrong way. I've almost been hit two or three times because I'm looking the other way. I've seen them almost hit children and I, I yell at them. I, I tell them wrong, you know, I yell at them wrong way. And they're from different. Um, I think uh, the fusion restaurant, the Latin restaurant that opened there from them. I think uh, the the diner on Wallace. But they're, they're different people. They're different uh, vendors. And I know they've been spoken to before by the previous captain. So they keep doing it. And as the weather gets warmer, it's going to get worse. So we need to jump on them. I got no issues with uh, doing enforcement on that. It's mm -hmm. The misuse of e-bikes, a lot of people have this misconception that they mm -hmm. can just do whatever they want, they can travel on the roads, they don't and, operate it. Just like and they go on the sidewalk. Are they supposed right. to be on the no, sidewalk? No, no, right? Okay. They got to follow the rules of the road, just like stop signs and, and red lights, and they got to go the same direction as vehicles, and these guys are flying uh, up and down roads, and uh, they're getting hit. We had one guy that was just hit right out here. Um, and it was a Chinese food delivery guy. Mm -hmm. I was on the scene for that one. Um, yeah, it was, uh, and he had no lights on, it was late at night. He got hit by a lot of car. Yeah, he got hit by a car. Um, so they're dangerous to themselves and, and other people. Mm -hmm. So, no, I'll tell you, I have my ex-O, John Paul, Captain Paul, uh, he's responsible for traffic, as, as am I, but uh, I can direct him to do enforcement uh, here at those e-bikes, and just bikes in mm -hmm. general. Um, I know they're a nuisance, and... Uh, well, they, you, they, I know they've been, uh, they've been spoken to, but they know they're watching. So it's either early in the day or in the evening when it's dark okay. is when, when they'll do Because they know, because when they see me now, they go the other way. I've already spoken to a few of them. So Wait, they, right, that, <laughs> I get to right, come like, so But they're slick. They're not yeah. stupid. They know that they're going to be watched. Well, yeah, no, no. I, I mean... Some people you can only talk for so much time, and then you have to only force with them, so if that's the case, so be it. Um, who's next? Larry. Yeah. I, I just wanted to ask the predecessor also about this. If I have illegal parking, by my house, by my building, uh, opposite PS96, there's no park, no standing zone. Cars repeatedly park there at least three, four times a week. I call it into 311. By the time they send the car out there, Six, eight hours later, I know it's low <coughs> priority and everything. They either ignore it, the car stays there, or they no, no problem down, or the car is gone by the time they got there. Now, this is a designated no standing zone. The cars will repeatedly park there, especially like 8 o'clock in the morning. So, um, if it's in 311, I'll look it up and see if uh, enforcement was taken. You know, they did enforcement, then uh, the code will be 96. They didn't do a force, it'd be 90X. I'll look to see how many uh, uh, 90X, which is no enforcement. And uh, I'll address it with uh, the troops. Okay. And say that's a hot topic. Neil, Marcy. Who else wants to ask a question so I know where to go next? Nancy. Captain, thank you for coming. Neil, I still live on Olinville. Um, I drive, but there are times on Saturdays and Sundays but I noticed that there is motorcycles, a lot of mopeds um, on Bronx, on Bronx Park Road East, or Bronx Road East, Bronx Park East, from Burke all the way through Allerton. I've also seen two or three cars on a 
I'm not saying on a regular basis, but I've seen two. One is a uh, is a white pickup. Another one is a is a, a black trailblazer. Um, they're almost drag racing down there. They went through the lights. Um, one nearly hit my car with my family in it. But it's really the motorcycles and the and the mopeds that I've noticed. Um, when I was driving and I was trying to get out of the way of one motorcycles, I almost hit another one, and then this guy kicked my car. And are you guys aware of that? Uh, no. Well, you are now.